So the central dogma of molecular genetics is replication, transcription, and translation. So replication is taking DNA and making more DNA. So this is taking a double helix and making two double helices out of it. Transcription is taking DNA and using it as a template for making another nucleic acid called RNA. The process of going from DNA to RNA is actually quite similar to going from DNA to DNA. Uh, it's just that it's simpler going from DNA to RNA, mostly because um, in going from DNA to RNA, less information is being transferred, and the fidelity of that transfer doesn't have to be as great. That is that if you make mistakes going from DNA to RNA, it's not nearly as bad as if you make mistakes going from DNA to DNA. So when you are replicating DNA, you have to be more careful. And then going from RNA to polypeptide, this is translation. And this is actually reading a code that's found in the RNA. It turns out to be a three nucleotide code for every amino acid and converting that information into sequence of uh, amino acids and polypeptides information. This is a much more complicated step and, and not that similar to, the, um, the, to uh, uh, replication or transcription. The enzymes, the major enzymes involved in these processes, DNA polymerase for replication, polymerizing the DNA, RNA polymerase for transcription, polymerizing RNA, and then um, you have, in translation, a, a very large molecular complex that we've talked about before called the ribosome that catalyzes that process. We also have additional things that go on that aren't really part of the central dogma, but they're near to it. Uh, reverse transcription encoded uh, that's catalyzed by reverse transcriptase. Uh, this is something you see, for example, in retroviruses, in the AIDS virus. They actually have a step where they go from having an RNA genome to a DNA genome. You also have post-translational modifications. So after you've made the polypeptide, you have a number of things that go on afterwards that modify how uh, the polypeptide is going to be making up phenotype. But this basic idea of replication, transcription, and translation, that's the central dogma, and that's what we're talking about in this chapter, or this part of the chapter. So we have replication, transcription and translation. The um, catalysts that make this happen, the primary one for replication is DNA polymerase, the primary one for transcription is RNA polymerase, and the primary one for translation are the ribosomes. The template for doing this, for replication, it's the chromosomes. For uh, transcription, it's the genes. So what is a gene? Central question. It's fitting that it's central to this chart. Central question to what is biology all about? What is a gene? A gene is something that is transcribed. A gene is something that, that uh, serves as a template for an RNA product. And then what is the template for translation? It's mRNAs, messenger RNAs. So genes and DNA are transcribed in some cases producing these things called messenger RNAs. The messenger RNAs then go to the ribosomes, providing information to the ribosomes that's used to make polypeptides. What are the subunits that give rise to the polymers? All of these are poly polymerization processes. For DNA, it's DNA nucleotides. For RNA, it's RNA nucleotides. And for translation, it's the making of polypeptides. It's the amino acids. This is something that, that uh, is a little out of the blue. How do these subunits get to the catalysts? In the case of DNA and RNA, they just diffuse there. There's just lots of DNA and RNA nucleotides, A, T, Gs, and Cs, um, that are floating around the cytoplasm. And they're in a high enough concentration that as the polymerases need these things, they're there. It's much more complicated with translation. And this is because not only do you need the amino acids around, um, but you also have to have a way of interfacing between the information that's found in the mRNA and the information that's ultimately going to make up the, uh, the polypeptide. And that, that interface is difficult because you're going from nucleic acid-based information to amino acid-based information, which is totally different. 
And the thing that comes between the, uh, the, the nucleic acid-based information and the polypeptide information, or amino acid information, uh, are these things called transfer RNAs. And in fact, there's more RNA that's involved in this process because the ribosomes themselves are made up of RNA, called ribosomal RNA. And what's the product? The product of replication is DNA. The product of transcription is RNA. And the product of translation are polypeptides. So just another look at, at the central dogma. Each of these steps, replication, transcription, and translation, all have three basic steps involved. One of them is they start. A second is, is that you have elongation. That's the polymerization step. And the third part is they stop. So each one has a start, an elongation step, and a stop step. And when you're going through talking about the different processes, um, you tend to dwell to at least some degree on start, elongation, and stop. Uh, in, in many cases, you dwell on one of those processes more than others. But, but you're always going to have those three things going on. In replication, you have something called priming that gets its start. It started in uh, translation. You have start codons that get things started. In uh, transcription, the RNA polymerase has to bind to um, the uh, DNA. And in the case of translation, you also have to have the mRNA binding to the ribosome itself. These are the, um, the various uh, catalysts that I have already talked about, uh, the DNA polymerase, the ribosome, and uh, the, the, uh, the RNA polymerase for um, uh, replication, translation, and transcription. Replication, transcription, uh, sorry, replication, translation, transcription. These sense codons, these are the things that are actually read by the ribosome or in the course of translation. This is the information that's provided by the mRNA. And then this is all a description of elongation. Translation is, is terminated by something called stop codons. And then you have various signals for termination for uh, transcription and, and, uh, and replication. If all of that seems overwhelming, that's because it is. It's very complicated. But although the details are going to differ, each one has some process by which it starts. Each one has some process by which polymerization occurs. And each one has some process by which the polymerization process stops. And you're either making DNA, you're making RNA, or you're making polypeptides. 